Here. Trustee Ortner? Here. Sanford? Here. Thomas? Uh, was here. He's here. Here. Wecken? Here. Banzek? Here. And um, so we will have the board nominate a president pro tem for the meeting. Um, I nominate uh, Trustee uh, uh, Zappa to serve as President Pro Tem for our meeting tonight. Second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Third call for nominations? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All same sign? Congratulations, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any short stories to tell, so we'll move to uh, <laughs> item two, review and approve minutes from the regular board meeting of August 2nd, 2011. Uh, we'll to approve the board minutes from the regular board meeting on August 2nd, 2011. We have a second, please. Second. Any other discussion on that item? Here One item that was actually mentioned for um, possible uh, amendment in the agreement policy development section on page three of the minutes. Uh, it states that a sample, a sample policy will be developed by Bucky Norman. Um, and what we're going to do is change that to say a sample policy was developed by Bucky Norman along with samples from the League of Wisconsin municipalities, which will be discussed uh, further. Yes, I do. Second? Second. Second. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, aye. 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 All the same aye. Item two is approved. Three comments from the floor. This is the opportunity for residents to make the board aware of topics or issues not on today's agenda. Is there anyone who would like to? Committee for our. I'm the chair of the committee that George assigned me to last year. We've uh, uh, we burned out one half of a committee, so and my wife and I we've got now we have new members, so we don't really have a presentation right now. We are uh, the discussion has been both uh, with uh, the village uh, personnel and with Pepperfest. The centennial which is I believe June uh, of next year. You know, on your centennial. And there's been pretty good discussion on uh, planning, like a cookbook history, you know, book type of thing. It's a loose leaf, or there's different varieties. But uh, where there'd be, we'd have some of the old recipes, you know, from you know the new recipes for the residents to get involved in that. And uh, you know the the costs, you know, we can cover those. It's not, you know, it's, it's we're still working on that. We haven't determined what that is yet. So, uh, but then we were hoping maybe to have a pre-sale. Which, if we did that, we could also fund then uh, any kind of centennial celebration that we might have, you know, to commemorate this historic occasion. Thank you, Stan. Item five: new business from the board or staff. President's comments. We won't have any of those, obviously. Gloria. I'm going to pass. Also. Thank you, Becky. Um, the only thing that I would have to report is just that since the last meeting there, uh, we did have the recall election, um, which was um, that we had a, a very high voter turnout, um, but everything went smoothly and um, nothing else really to report on that. Thank you. Item six, appointment of Hudson Public Utilities Commission Representative Chris Adams. Approval requested. I'll move that the Board of Trustees approve the appointment of Chris Adams to Hudson Public Utility Commission for a five-year term ending in September 2016. Second. We have a second from Colleen. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All the same sign. Chris Adams is approved for the Public Utilities Commission. 
Item 7, amended Class B liquor license for extended premises for Cozy Corner for September 17, 2011. Is requested? Uh, I move that the Class Parents B Class B retail license for the sale of fermented malt beverages and intoxicating liquors for Cozy Corner be temporarily amended for an event taking place on Saturday, 17 September 2011, between the hours of 3.30 p.m. and midnight with the following conditions. Area outside of the building be completely enclosed with a fence and extended premises accessed only from within the building. Use of alcohol shall remain within the building or fenced in area per establishment's liquor license. Number three, use of outside area only with specific permission of the village board for a requested date and time. Number four, owner to provide an equal amount of adjacent substitute off-street parking while parking lot is fenced during the time of the event. Number five, owner to be responsible for DJ and music volume. And number six, all outside music to end no later than 10 p.m. Get a second on Stan's motion, please. Comes up. Thanks, Jim. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried for item seven. Item eight, Land Commission recommendation chair update. Uh, we are still working on the parkland dedication fees. Um, it's in the works. We haven't had anything finalized yet. Okay, thank you, Dan. Item 9, Personnel and Finance Committee recommendation. <clears throat> Item A, claims approval requested. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we did meet earlier tonight in the uh, Finance Committee and did review the claims. So I move to approve the August 2011 non recurring claims in of $63,624.30. Second. Hearing a second, any further discussion regarding that item? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, claims are approved. Item B, selection of assessor services approval requested. Mr. Chairman, we had uh, a special finance committee meeting earlier this month and did approve and recommend um, assessor services. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that the contract for assessor services for the village of North Hudson be awarded to Bomar Appraisal, Inc., and that the village administrator be authorized to sign the contract on behalf of the village. Thank you, Darrell. Second, please. Second. Second by Stan. Any other discussion or update for anybody on this process? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Item C, selection of auditor services, approval requested. I think that one is going to be on hold. We discussed that at finance, and we still need some more information regarding that. Item D, unused levy limit carryover approval requested. I'll let Gloria give us that in a little bit of a nutshell. Well, I guess the best way to give it um, as briefly as possible is uh, use the background information on the issue statement. Um, the levy limit will be calculated based on the prior year's actual instead of the allowable. Um, that, was, that came down from the state, and the village uh, did not carry over its full allowable amount last year. So um, there is a limited amount you can carry forward, which is... Uh, uh, half a percent and um, in order to do that we need the board's approval uh, the document that's attached to that issue statement uh, shows you the breakdown of how we calculate and get to the levy limit and the levy limit represents the taxes that uh, um, go out to the residents and you'll notice that um, that it's going to be um, quite a bit different or lower this year 
than last year, and that's because of the refinancing that we did. But um, with that being said, we are in, uh, uh, we, we do, we are in need of uh, cutting expenses in order to balance our budget for next year. And so um, when you add the 7,000, in order to add that, you have to subtract something else, and it comes to about $3,000 you, but it's $3,000 that we need in order to, to function. So um, I'm requesting that the board approve carrying forward. This item was approved at finance and actually I'm more confused now than I was then, but nonetheless. We did discuss this at finance, yes. Mr. Chairman. I move that the village administrator be authorized to carry forward the reference $7,088 of unused levy from the prior year. Can I hear a second? Second, second. second from Jim. Thank you, Jim. Any other discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, I think it's approved. 9E. 2012 annual vill village budget approval requested. Okay, got done with that. <laughs> Quick time. That's been on there at the president's request since for three months now. So no, four months now. And at some point we will be approving it. So we have a couple meetings scheduled in the next few weeks for that, and um, nothing to really approve tonight. Item 10, Public Works Committee recommendations. I'll leave that up to the Honorable Mr. Standiford. <laughs> Thanks for the accolades. Uh, there is no uh, particular chair update, but we do have a completed project, and that is the St. Croix Station project, which is now done. We did discuss this and recommend in, uh, in our last Public Works <coughs> meeting on the recommendation of Cedar Corp uh, that there are no outstanding issues and we can proceed with the payment of the uh, the final uh, invoice. So, Mr. Chairman, I would move that uh, the village, uh, if I can find the amount, yeah, about $8,000, but I... 83.97.93. There we go. That, that the village uh, pay the final invoice amount of $8,397.93 to the contractor Zappa Brothers. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Item C, resolution of 2011-13, uh, levying special assessment for public improvements on St. Croix, or on, I'm sorry, Station Lane North and Station Circle North. This relates to the project that is now complete, and we do have the uh, the indicated information in your packet as far as what the special assessments are. Those special assessments, I think as most residents know, can be either paid in full or they can be deferred over a time specific. Uh, Kevin, do you have any comments you want to make on the, uh, the final assessments? Um, about $650 less than what the uh, preliminary assessment report was. So I guess I open it up to any questions on that. You do have in front of you the final resolution. Like Darrell was saying, they would have up to October 25th to pay, pay it off initially. Otherwise, they can put it on their tax roll and um, pay it over 
for that particular item, it'd be for a six-year time frame. And it's a percent and a half more than what the, uh, the village would borrow or borrow the money for is what they would be charged for a financial fee. Thank you. So for purposes of moving this forward, and in case there's any discussion, Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of resolution number 2011-13 which is the resolution for the special assessments as indicated in Schedule C in the information that you have. Second. Here is second. Thank you. Any other discussion? I just got a question. This It's more of a learning question. When we do a special assessment, are we assessing how much property is along the road, or is it just per unit? Kevin, why don't you respond so it's on the, the sure. tape? I mean, that was actually discussed as part of the first, when we did the first project and there was a decision made, you know, it was going to be on a per lot basis just because they're fairly decent sized lots. You know, some areas, some projects that we've done in the past has been on a linear footage, but for this particular case, it's on a, on a per lot basis. All right. Kind of have some flexibility there. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. The board has a choice of how to do it as long as they come up with sort of the most fair way to do it for the, all the properties involved. Good question. Thank you. Nice answer, short, too. <laughs> okay. I think we're covered with public works. Item 11, Public Safety Committee recommend. We need to vote on the resolution. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We have a resolution. We have a, uh, a, a motion and a second. And we've had a little discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, we probably need a roll call on this, yep. do we, Terry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Stan? Uh, yes. Jim? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Carry unanimously. Now we can go on to public safety. Jim? All right. Uh, traffic uh, item B, increase in parking violation fine for overland <coughs> vehicles. And Approval requested. Um, at this point, we're going to discuss this in more detail on Thursday. Um, uh, Judge uh, Wombat came down and gave us his uh, interpretation of what's been happening and the concerns of how, if we regulate parking on any particular streets, it's going to just continue to ripple on down through the village. Um, Mark, do you want to grab the podium and sort of help out with any thoughts you've got on it? So, if the board has any input for us for our meeting on Thursday it could possibly be helpful. And just a correction, it was uh, Judge Woolpat oh, that, that came forward. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just a pronunciation issue. People call me all kinds of different things, so I understand. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Judge Wolpat did come down and we had some discussion about the uh, ordinance and uh, really there was no resolution at the, at the public safety meeting. So uh, not prepared to move forward on this particular um, item at this time, but we are looking into it and trying to determine really the, the fairest way to, to still solve the issues that we've got uh, with relation to overlength vehicles in the entire village, but maybe more specifically the parking issues uh, related to trailers and whatnot near Ferry Landing Park. And if you look on the Public Safety Committee agenda, both items are listed separately so we can try to figure out where we're going to go with that. Absolutely. And uh, the next uh, item C is uh, the possibility of uh, increasing the fine for parking mm -hmm. in designated handicap and disabled, uh, disabled spaces. Uh, we did table that motion also. Uh, and public safety will be discussing that again this Thursday. That's not on the agenda. That was tabled from the last board meeting to this board meeting. Um, and I guess that one, if you're interested, you could still move on tonight. We probably could. Did you have a, um, a recommendation um, as to what you have seen in other municipalities with what uh, standard fee Yes. Well, two months ago at the Public Safety Committee, it was moved that the fine amount be changed from $50 to $100. And so my understanding was that was the motion that was being brought forward as a recommendation from Public Safety. And uh, I would be uh, um, absolutely fine with uh, making a motion uh, to the board to increase that fee from $50 to $100 a 
at this time. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Would this, uh, I'm just procedurally, is it, is this simply a fee change or is this any kind of ordinance change? Can we do this by simple motion today? We, you can do it by simple motion if it's in your fee schedule, right? Is that where it is? So we do a resolution and it's we can change? It's not in the fee schedule. It's, it's not in the fee schedule? No. It's um, in a different schedule than right. is. What is it called? For the Basically, it's, it's in the, the bond schedule that we have. Not the state bond schedule, but just the bond schedule that's it's that's not pared down from those written numbers in our ordinance so i don't think that we need to have an ordinance to change it well right. if it's not in the ordinance then you don't but right it's not in the ordinance but it's not in the regular fee schedule either which would just be a resolution that has yeah our fee schedule doesn't have anything to do with the police okay. with the fine amounts or the bond amounts really it it's it goes to the courts and uh, based on the information that i read in the ordinance it talks about the fact that the board sets the parking uh, fines and, and fees Daryl, I, I don't know the answer then, uh, but it would be okay to go ahead and do it. And if, if not, we'll do it again next month if we have to do something different procedurally. Good answer. So I'll, I'll check that. Don't. That it's not good. in the ordinance. Well, it's not in it. Yeah. Given those parameters, we have a motion and a second, and we're discussing it. We might as well vote on it. We may do it again, apparently, but let's move on. Absolutely. Do you all those in start? favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried to increase the uh, fine for parking in a designated handicap and disabled space. Beautiful. Uh, with the emergency management director job description, uh, we uh, do need to have this plan signed um, by a September deadline. Um, the description, the job description in itself is extremely lengthy and complex. Uh, we will be discussing that again Thursday in an effort to try to get that resolved and find out uh, what, who will be responsible for this and uh, what the compensation for this position will be. Um, so we will be discussing that Thursday. Do you have anything to offer on that at all? Yeah, this is actually, um, this particular item was looking for passage of the, or approval of the update to the emergency operations plan. Oh. And that is true, there is a deadline of September 30th that we have to have this document to the county so that they can then provide it to the state. So. What I did was, uh, in lieu of the fact we do not have an emergency management director position and, and all of those things, is I went through and updated um, the document with phone numbers, names, and those types of things. So really, uh, other than names and phone numbers, and I think Stan noticed there was his cell phone was missing. That's now been added to the document. Um, they're just those are those are kind of the changes that are made and the line of succession that was changed from the last time it was updated. I would uh, make such a motion. I would move that we approve the updates that uh, Mark has uh, performed on the emergency management uh, uh, plan. Second. Thank you, Colleen. Any other discussion? Could we get that, uh, the treasurer listed in there? I know it says administrator, but it'd be great if it said treasurer just because I know that some of the emergency management, uh, I, I don't believe I've seen it, but it could have been. I'll let you Mark, tell what me are, whether it's in Mark, there. What are the consequences of not having that filled in on time, for example? That's a great question. I, I don't know that I don't <laughs> have the answer to that. Ever since this started, Other than I like your rules. Administrating this sort of thing because it's rather burdensome. And frankly, not to be fast and loose, but what where does it go and the time limit doesn't matter, um, who sees it, and, and, and that sort of thing. Well, to venture a guess, I believe it's, there's probably state statute that references that each municipality must have it yes. submitted to the state or to the county and then to the state. Justin Sandler needs to complete it and get it into the state. Right. And then I ask again, what are the, what are the consequences? I think we would be out of compliance with state law, which we try to avoid. And then what are the consequences of that? That I don't know. 
I was just wondering what kind of punishment is doled out in that sort of situation. I don't want to find out. Let me put it that way. Calls, calls the president <laughs> pro tem off to jail. Yeah. Huh? Calls the president pro tem off to jail, don't you, Mark? <laughs> not myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Conflict yeah, of interest no, and honestly, all. Honestly, it's a question of, of really, does anybody, what, what happens in those deals? I can find out and get back to you uh, on that. Usually not, <clears throat> Mark. Okay. Anyway, that's just the first thing. I mean, doesn't anybody else wonder if they just say do it, you just do it, and you know, we all go, well, the but state, it's, it's the I, I wonder at some the of these things. The state makes a lot of mandates, and most municipalities comply. Some don't, and there, there often are not consequences, but there Thank could you. be. Probably the practical side is that if we do have an emergency here, we want to make sure that our plan is up to date, regardless of what the state says. The plan says. or the hiring of a the plan. plan. I think the plan. Yeah. And I think to answer Gloria's question uh, about the treasurer, because it's not in here tonight and because the wording isn't there, I would request that you pass it as is, and we can add that as a right. I uh, amend that I when the, we come to our next update. In response to your Becky's comment, is if Mark has a plan or enough information in there that pretty much covers everything, but the submitting of it every year and the, and the redoing of it, to me, seems a bit uh, burdensome periodically. And Lord knows we want to be prepared in the event of an emergency, because I'm waiting to get up that line of succession myself. <laughs> But, it is but really all I'm doing is it, it, it's been an issue ever since this was, was thrust on us, and it's a lot of work. And there is expense with that work, and I just wonder where it all goes or what happens. To, to help out, this might help out a little bit, and extremely briefly, but the reason for keeping this plan updated is it involves uh, such things as working with uh, distributors like Menards or Home Depot to make sure that we've got access to materials in the event uh, things need to be boarded up. Um, language with these basically you have contract options that are created that's why you do it because in the event that you have a disaster it's not the time to be scrambling to say hey we need 200 sheets of plywood how are we going to get them how are we going to get them down here so it's all of these little things this is one of a hundred different examples well and if you have a disaster and you don't um, submit your your request for uh, disaster aid correctly, you could be out that aid. Absolutely, and, uh, and for liability, if people come in and they want to volunteer and we don't have them sign up as a volunteer, we assume the liability for that person, anything that happens, and we as a village would be extremely exposed to uh, potential lawsuits and things. So there's a lot to it, you know, it, it is complex. And as Mark and I have started to un Ravel the layers of this onion, it, it's deep and involved, and we want to try to be effective and efficient, but still keep it manageable. And it's not easy, but uh, we'll come up with a plan here. But I think getting the signatures on here, so at least when it's right now, is, is critical, and I would um, offer that as a friendly amendment to my motion that w we will make what necessary changes are that Mark needs to add for phone numbers and adding the treasurer. I got one more question on that item. Or do we have money set aside in the budget for an emergency management position? Um, if I'm supposed to field that one, I would say potentially not. But we still have to determine what that amount will be uh, and how much work is involved in the position. at this point uh, with the budget crunches, issues that we've got, um, it's uh, potentially not there. But look into it, it's a good point, Dan. I just hate to see you put all this work into something we're not gonna fill anyway, yeah. if that so be. Well then, we, I hope we get an well, emergency so we can not try this thing position. out. Yeah, and it's, it's assignment of duties, and there are yeah. statutory requirements as far as having the work plan in place and there are legal ramifications in terms of uh, notice procedures and notice requirements in the event of a trigger triggering of an emergency so it's primarily the assignment of the duties under someone's designated <coughs> responsibility yes 
I, I only brought it up because I feel that we should be looking with the city of Hudson together and getting the unit put together as one. And that is an uh, agenda topic for Thursday's public safety meeting. I was looking for the board's opinion on that. Mm. I'm not sure if it fits under this agenda item. It's not. Yeah, we will be discussing it on Thursday. Sounds good. Anything so else? we've got a motion and a second. A second on the floor, and I so discussion. So we'll, can we get uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Same sign. And then on a good note, number E, um, Mark, I'll let you uh, take the uh, kudos on this one. Does I'm just going to go quickly. The Public Safety Committee had authorized the sale of the Quonset Hut storage building that we purchased <laughs> roughly six years ago. It was posted on Craigslist, and after a few go-arounds with people of, that were interested, we do have a written bid um, for the uh, full amount that we requested uh, or we advertised it for. And so uh, we do. you should have in front of you the written bid from Samuel Beatty uh, in the amount of $4,000 for the purchase of the Quonset Hut storage building, as is with no warranties from the village. Can we get a motion to that regard? Uh, move uh, from the city. Is there a recommended motion? Yeah, there is. A, well, we had it in finance, Jim. The same thing. Well, I'll move to accept the bid of $4,000 by Samuel Beatty for the uh, Quonset hut we had advertised. I'll I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Right. Item 12, Public Welfare Committee recommendations. We met briefly to discuss the continuation of the spring bulk item collection for 2012. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Um, and so it was a recommendation of Public Welfare to discontinue the spring bulk item collection, which was that uh, spring event where we had... Um, big uh, the dumpsters up behind the car wash due to lack of um, participation I'll move that we discontinue the spring bulk item collection for 2012 second all right any discussion anybody needs a, any more information what than what I briefly <coughs> threw out out there Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Both same sign. Then we have the discontinuance of the spring and fall leaf collection for 2012. We'll still have it for the fall of this year, but it's just for next year. Public welfare thought with the diminishing um, monies available towards that, the, uh, the diminishing lack of use of it because of other ways to get rid of it, the, uh, the bulk item or the... Um, collector baskets that Veolia has that people have been finding a way to get rid of their um, um, uh, yard waste or fall leaf collection stuff and there was a cost to the village of approximately two thousand dollars that we don't know if we can recoup so the public welfare um, I'll approve uh, recommended that we discontinue that so I will move to discontinue the spring and fall leaf collection for 2012 Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. Item 13. Mark, maybe, just to interject really quickly, um, just a notation that that spring and fall leaf collection didn't discontinuance would start in 2012. The 2011 fall leaf collection is still taking place I, and will take place on November 7th. I mentioned that at the very beginning. I'm sorry, I missed that. It's okay. Thank you. But we have a date? Yes. November 7th. November 7th. But it's the first Monday in November. And that's kind that? No. November 7th? November 7th. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Item 13, Park Board Committee Recommendations. Chair update. Uh, well, I don't have a large update. Just reminding everyone that um, the dedication for Chief Jansen Memorial Park will be Saturday, September 24th from 11 to 1. Um, and I we did discuss a little bit at our park board meeting that you know we've been talking about this park for so long we um, haven't really been mentioning other things at the park 
board has done that have been successful um, as outlined in our park plan, such as having the skating rink here at the, the Village Hall has been quite popular the past couple winters. We've replaced some signs, such as at Eagle Woods and Woodcrest. Um, we started working with North Hudson Elementary in making a little more use of Webster Park um, and started with you know the buckthorn thinning or the first go around of buckthorn thinning. Um, so just wanted people to be aware that you know we have been working on other things in addition to Chief Jansen Park. Um, so I hope you can make it to the dedication. Thank you, Colleen. Mm -hmm. That's all the official business we have tonight. Motion so. to adjourn. You can if you'd like, but we don't necessarily need one. Well, I mean, since you're the chair and you get to do it all the other time, I'm right. getting to do it this time. Well, then we're officially, it's officially over. Thank you. Mm -hmm.